Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Friday. Happy Friday to everybody. Again, happy Friday to all of you. We have a wonderful word for you today, and I hope you did all your reading on yesterday, but this is Pastor Kenneth McKay, and I am the pastor here at Disciples of Christ Christian Fellowship, where our mission is making disciples to a difference. Let me say that again, making disciples to make a difference, because listen, we don't see the grace of God in Christians like we used to. Back in the day, when a person was saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, you could see it. You could see it all over them. But today's time, now we got this thing where we have been so deceived, where, you know, we've been told and taught not to judge, you know. But in this life, everything is judged. Everything, you know, everything. The doctor judge you, you know, when you're sick and tell you what's wrong, you know. In sports, you judge, you know, when you're wrong, they throw a flag. The police officer judge you, the judge will judge you. And God is going to judge us, praise God, through Christ Jesus, you know, when we get, praise God, before him. Amen. So, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, make a disciple to make a difference. And that's what we want to focus on. That's our mission. And we want to make sure that we're making real disciples of the Lord. Amen. And so it's tight, but it's right. And remember Wednesday night Bible study, what the comforter Jesus taught, what the comforter would do, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. All these things that they break down from there, praise God. Why? Amen. He tell you why he's going to do what he do. Praise God. And we're going to stand before God and hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Then therefore, praise God, we better make sure that we judge right, pastors judge you right, everybody around you judge right if they love you, and tell you, praise God, when you're wrong, amen. I love when Paul said, for us as Christians, he said, improve uh, that which is good and acceptable will of God. So when you're wrong, we got to judge it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Then he said, be not conformed to this world, but praise God, you know, we're to be different, amen, we're to praise God, to prove that what is acceptable and perfect will of God. In order to do that, you got to judge it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know, all the folks get mad about judging, you know, and they talk that foolishness from a pulpit. It's one of those preachers that God never called in the first place. And number two, your life is just a cesspool, all right? You're just living a mess of a life. And, you know, listen, it's tight, but it's right, you know, so we have to be like John and just throw it out there and just preach the unadulterated word of God. Listen, you want to take the opportunity while we have a chance now and put God's word out. Out there, amen. All right, so listen, praise God. You're gonna make a lot of folks mad at you, but that's okay. All right, if you're gonna get to heaven, praise God, you better hear what I got to say because I'm coming straight from the word of God, amen. So, again, good morning to everybody and happy Friday to you. And so, listen, we'd like you to make sure that you subscribe to us and hit the like button. And so, remember, our theme is keep your eyes on the vision, ideal CCF. To all of our members, praise God, you have done a wonderful job. You have done a wonderful job, you know, and, you know, yet we're still giving our testimonies and you give your testimony what God has done for us. You know, four years and four months ago, we stood up and praise God. And you all voted. You wanted your own place. You wanted your own property. And God gave you 10, gave you 10.2 and 10,000 square foot building. And then he wouldn't finish as we pray, we march, we believe God, taking up one offering and paid it off in four years and four Four months, all praise God, one point three million dollars altogether. We paid over two million and some change. When you praise God, look at all the furniture, all the uh, up to date equipment, you know, sound system, you name it. Everything is great. So we just thank God for what He has done, and we give Him all the praise and we give Him all the glory and all the honor because God did it. So if God is in it, like I've always told you, He'll bless it. If not, you're on your own, and you're going to have to resort to some things that is not pleasing in the eyes of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to start pimping your people, lying to the people, telling the people God say He'll make you rich if you bring up an extra offering. That you know what you call that? That's when you got a desperate preacher that have no faith in God, okay, or whoever the deacon, whoever taking up the offering. And when you do these disgusting things, God is not pleased, and you're gonna struggle. <laughs> no matter how many people you have in your church, you're gonna struggle. Because God will blow on it. And when God blow, it ain't going nowhere, okay? But when he's for you, who can be against you? And so we just thank God, and we want you to pass that testimony on, you know, 
I'll tell folks what God has done because they're, they're no longer draw folks, praise God, when they see a place where God is moving, where God is working, okay? So make sure that you do that. So there's a reason why you hear me talk the way I talk, okay? So we're not going to brag. We're not bragging. We're boasting in the Lord Jesus. Somebody got to know the story. Somebody got to know. Why you think they got so many books in the library and on, online and people on social media? Because why? Somebody got to tell the story, okay? If you ever saw that, you know, one of my favorite little science fiction movies, you know, the 300, and praise God, you know, Leonardo, you know, the king, you know, he took one of his men, you know, that was wounded, you know, and he told him, you know, he said, uh, uh, soldier, I need you to go back home. He said, king, oh, king, I'm able. I, I, I see even better with one eye. And he wanted to fight for his king, but he said, somebody need to tell the story, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so anyway, and he told it later on. So glory to God. Somebody got to tell what God is doing, and that's why we have our Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Somebody got to tell the story. Amen. So we thank God for that. So listen, let's go into prayer. Let's pray for First Lady. Okay. And so they forgot to heal her. Also, uh, let's pray for Brother Mitchell, Sister Shaw. Let's also pray for Elder Sarah as well. You know, so she's dealing with some kidney issues. And, but God, he is able. He is able. Praise God. You know, it ain't over until the Holy Ghost says it's over. Amen. But meantime, stand on your faith. Trust God. Believe God. And like I said, you talk to God and stand on his word and tell him what the word say and give him praise, honor and all the glory. Praise God. And don't turn him loose. Like Jacob said, I won't turn you loose until you bless me. So you keep on talking to God because what? I believe it worked. I really, truly honestly believe that. And if I didn't, I would not be telling you so. OK, so anyway, you just keep praying, keep believing God for whatever miracle, personal miracle, whatever you need from God. OK, and so we're going to believe God on your behalf. So we're going to do like the Bible say, the Bible say, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, now, now, when you get ready to stand together, all right, again, I say unto you that, praise God, that if the two of you shall touch and agree on anything that they shall ask, he said, shall be done. Now, listen to the promise. It shall be done. All right. Why? How? By my father, which is in heaven. Okay. He wears it. He's in heaven. Okay. Where was Jesus? He was on earth. Okay. Where was the father? He's in heaven. And he had a chair, a special chair made for him that praise God that when he rose from the dead, praise God, listen, David said, my Lord, said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand side till I make thy enemy thy footstool. Man, it's a beautiful story. Amen. So listen, we believe God, all right? So we believe in God for filling up the church, 500. We believe in God to reach that 100 soul goal, all right, by the October the 30th. So we believe in God to add 100 new souls. And it's coming. It's already done. It's already done. And listen, what's made our soul a little bit tougher, says, now I want you to have faith. I want you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Keep on believing. Keep on working towards it because you got to understand. Now, if we water it down, if we sugar coated. We tell you that, you know, that everybody going to heaven, you know, I think it was Carson Pearson, you know, that put that thing out there, you know, talking about uh, uh, in, uh, um, uh, inclusion, I, I believe it was. I hope I got that right, you know, and so he feel like everybody going. Homosexuals, you know, no matter what you're saying, drunk, don't matter. It goes against, told everything gets against what God's word said, but that's what he believed. <laughs> you know, just because you believe something don't mean it's right. <laughs> okay? So anyway, praise God, you know, we, we're not going to water it down, sugar coated. We're not going to do no softball preaching. We're going to tell you the, nothing but the um, unadulterated word of God truth, okay? And the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free okay so we're going to stand on the word of god so we're not going to water it down sugarcoat it try to make you feel good because that means pastor really don't love you don't care about you you know just leading you straight to hell okay and that's what we don't want all right okay so i gotta tell you the truth i might sting a little bit might hurt a little bit well praise god if you could take it you can make it because it'll sure make it better <laughs> somebody say amen glory to god so let's get ready to go into prayer um, I'm going to get to my prayer list here and try and mention some of these things we have on here because we want the Lord continue to bless our finances as well, you know, because we want to build our health and wellness center. We're building the picnic ground, so we're believing God for the dirt. We need the dirt. And listen, don't forget to pray for Minister Beltram. You know, his mother, you know, was taken to the hospital and she on the respirator, so our family's all meeting up there in uh, Texas, and so um, be around her and to make whatever decision they're going to make. So we're going to pray for the 
family, you know, the Lord just be with them. Uh, Minister Beltram, uh, that's his, 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 his uh, mother, uh, mother, and that's his grandmother. And so, therefore, we're going to pray for the family this morning, all right? We're going to also pray for Minister Beltram because, you know, he's building a nice, beautiful house, a mansion, you ask me. And so, you know, we dig, we dug the well, and so the well is stubborn, you know, so the water there, but the water not coming up like it's supposed to flow. So we're going to believe God for that, too, all right? That, that water, you know, you know, stubborn water, stubborn well, you know, you got you got to come on up and start flowing like you're supposed to. So we're going to speak the word flow, flow water flow in the name of Jesus. Okay. So um, let's pray. Let's believe God. All right. For each other, for everyone that is on, that is watching with us this morning. Again, we thank God for you. All right. And I want you to enjoy the rain because rain is coming down, you know? So uh, we thank God for it. Okay. Thank God for it, for the rain. All right. And whatever problems you have, you know, a song that hit my spirit, you know, when Linda, uh, uh, Vanilla, Nelly, and Vinny, whatever their name was, you know, the two frogs, you know, that uh, sing a beautiful song, you know, blame it on the rain, blame it on the rain, falling. <laughs> them boys got a war for that when they were a fraud, when they weren't even saying, well, I tell you, the devil is busy, man. <laughs> let's pray, y'all. Let's pray. We're having too much fun up in here, you know, but hey, that's the way Christians are supposed to be. Praise God. We can enjoy, have joy and laughter and Enjoy each other, amen, but not, praise God, doing it the world's way, amen? All right, so, <laughs> so the world is going to get me in that choir yet. She's going to get me there yet, okay? So I better, I better tone it down, tone it down. I don't want to let the good stuff come out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> let's pray saints father god we come before you we worship and god we just give you praise we just bless you god and we thank you right now hallelujah jesus lord it was you that allowed us to get up i thank you god i heard the alarm clock but god because you blessed me to be able to hear god and to blood but yet running in my vein god you watched over us while we slept last night god i thank you and we give you praise god we thank you for the beautiful day that thou has given us god we even though it's raining thank you for it so much god my grass appreciate it i appreciate god let's water bill thank you so much father we just thank you for everything and all that you're doing god we ask lord that if we have sinned god if there's anything in our heart god that has defiled us oh god that has angered you oh god that disappointed you god forgive us in the name of jesus thank you for the blood of jesus that washes away all of our sin and thy word that say that if we confess our fault you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, God, and give you praise, God. Help us to stand on your word and to preach the unadulterated word of God. In the name of Jesus, God, without water and sugar, God, without compromising, without adding and changing your word, God, in the name of Jesus, for the Holy Ghost, we're going to save you, sanctify you, feed you with the Holy Ghost, the preacher got to preach. We thank you, and God, we give you praise for that, oh God. Father, we pray your will be done here at the OCCF. We thank you for everything you've done, and I can remember some of the old prayers, God, that we say, thank you, God, for what you're going to do, and thank you for what you've done, God. We thank you. We say that prayer today. Thank you for what you've done, and thank you for what you're going to do, God. We thank you for the picnic ground. We thank you for the dirt. We speak it, God. That dirt is coming, God. I see the truck, God, coming in, God, from rolling and going down to the picnic ground. Lord, I tell you, Thank you in the name of Jesus, God. By faith, I sit God in my spirit, and I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the increase of the finances to do the thing we got to do. Pay off the picnic ground. Build a health and wellness center. It's coming. And Lord, help us to stay focused, God, to get these things done. God, we thank you, God, as you add to the church. We thank you in the name of Jesus. As I pray, oh God, we see it in our spirit, God, that you're filling up the church, God, in the name of Jesus, preaching the unadulterated word of God with fire and brimstone. We thank you and give you praise, God. We bless you right now. Bless the people of God, everyone that's sick, that's under my voice. Heal, God. We speak healing for them, God, in the name of Jesus, in my spirit. See them raising up, God. See them doing better. See them jumping for joy. See them praising the Lord. We thank you and give you praise by faith. We speak over them now that they are healed. First lady is healed, God, in the name of Jesus. Brother Mitchell, God, Sister Shaw, God, Sister Sarah, God, you touch them 
Touch my mother. Continue to give her good health. Continue to give me good health. That I stand in the pulpit and preach down the doctorated word of God as long as I will have me, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We just give you praise for everything this morning, God. Continue to bless the church in the finance department. Continue to bless Deacon Willie over the road, God. Bless him in the name of Jesus. Give him everything he needs, God. By faith, I see it right now if we speak, God, that you give him, God, good, dependable workers, God. Bless him with another truck, God. Increase the business, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and give you praise right now, God. So God, again, I ask that you bless everyone, all of the people of God, the saints of the Most High. God, you can't help but bless them as you have blessed them through your son, Christ Jesus. Continue to meet all of their needs. Give them good health and bless God we thank you. Help us to be the church without spot or wrinkle. Help us, God, to be the church that you have us to be, God. We thank you and give you praise. We bless you and worship your God. I pray, God, right now in the name of Jesus, as I speak, God, the sin in my spirit, that water is gushing up. Water is gushing up in the name of Jesus for Minister Beltram. Touch the family. Be with them, God. Comfort them, God, in the name of Jesus, and give them safe traveling, oh God, as they travel, God, to the mother, to the grandmother, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and give you praise now, God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. He's a God of comfort. He's a God of comfort. Yes, he is, amen. So we just thank God for that, amen. So I hope you told somebody about the devotion. Now, listen, saints, we got to do our part now. It's not over yet now, okay? We we got to do our part. We got to make sure that we get, we throw them fiction lines out there, all right, and tell folks about what we're doing praise God, and praise God, get them a chance, praise God, to get this thing right, so we need your help, praise God, and get the word out, get the word out, get the word out, amen, glory to God, so let's go into our message this morning, okay, and you, this is going to bless you good, now this message this morning, man, listen here, I wish I had a whole lot of time to talk to you on this one, because man, this right here, man, just, just, just so, so, so important important today, okay? So, are we ready for the word? If you're ready, put a thumb up if you're ready, okay? Good morning to Brother Hagler, all right? All right. I, I hope Kentucky is treating you good, man. If not, you just come on back home now. <laughs> come on back home, particle son. We'll be, well, I'll be standing outside by Rodine Road waiting on you, <laughs> looking for you, you and the family, okay? But anyway, God bless you, my brother, you and the family. We miss you. But uh, our message this morning is uh, let no one, all right, let no one deceive you. Let let me say that again. Let no one deceive you. Okay, y'all remember that movie Jackie Chan, you know, and uh Chris Tucker, you know, and Jackie, you know, you know, he didn't speak the best of English and he's trying to talk and communicate with Chris. And they say, Do you understand the word that's coming out of my mouth? And Chris, of course, said, Can't nobody understand what you say. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth this morning. Again, the subject is let no one deceive you. And boy, I tell you what, the enemy is busy today. That enemy is busy today. I mean, he is just trying his best to deceive the whole world. One of the things that, you know, uh, that I'm reminded of is that Armageddon, we don't hear too much about the battle of Armageddon, okay? And, and it's getting ready to send up right now, even as we speak, concerning Israel, okay? So the enemy, praise God, you know, got their eyes on, on Israel to allow to annihilate, to destroy, praise God. But the only reason they can't get nowhere, praise God. You know, it may do a little damage here and there. It's because it's not time yet. Like Jesus kept saying when it wasn't the time. Not my time yet. So it's not time for Armageddon right now, okay? And so therefore, when it do happen, now watch this right here. Man, when they think they're going to destroy Israel, then all of a sudden, here comes the shining armor. Here come Jesus, all right? And wave his hand, okay? And do away with the enemy. Now, one thing about, praise God, after the uh, uh, first resurrection of the saints of God, you know, the Bible talks about praise God the day in Christ shall rise first. Now, after that, going to take place is a tribulation period. After that, praise God, we're going to have a thousand years of peace on earth. Okay, after the thousand years of peace on earth, the Bible said, Then Satan is once again released and he's going to deceive the hearts of men. That's what he is a deceiver, and he started his best work in the Garden of Eden, praise God. And with that work, praise God, he thought it now laid it, everybody, everything, and causing everybody to go to hell with him. But thank God, praise God, that he had a plan. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. We thank God for Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. Amen. So Satan thought he had us, but thank God he was watching over us the whole time. Amen. All right. So don't be deceived. All right. Let no one deceive you. Coming from 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. All right. Now, I want you to make sure you read this chapter. Read it real good because remember I told you, and, uh, building strong faith, you can't do it without the word. You can't do it without prayer. And you definitely can't do it not being faithful. You can forget it. As we read what Jesus said after all the miracles and healing and all the the cities, praise God, the villages, praise God, after that, and they just looked upon the crowd, looked at the people, and saw that, praise God, as he had compassion upon them, for they were looking at them as sheep without a shepherd. You got to have a shepherd. You got to have a church. You got to go, people. Stop all these excuses. You got to go, got to go, got to go. Got a few words to say about that to encourage you. So, praise God, sit back, relax, and get ready, all right? So, coming from Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, all right, second chapter one through four. So hear me real good. Again, I praise God, a subject is let no one deceive you. And we're talking about even from the world, praise God. We're talking about, you know, the, the, you know they got knockoffs on everything. You know, even the Gucci purses and all the name brand clothes and purses that, that people like it. You go buy that stuff and think you get, praise God, a great deal on something that should cost you $1,000 and you, praise God, go and pay $300 and find out it's a knockoff. Off. Did you know that they even have the uh, undercover officer at every football game because you have people selling knockoff jerseys that, you know, trying to sell them as if they're real, you know, authentic jerseys, but they're not. But they set it up where you has to, has to have that hologram on it. If you don't have that hologram on it, it's the knockoff. It's fake. So you're being deceived. OK, people even deceive you with fake money. So that's why we go to the store. They put a mark on it <laughs> and if it change black money, they're going to call the FBI on you because I'm Somebody done fooled you and deceived you and gave your butt some fake money, okay? So when they find that you got knockoff jersey, knockoff things, you know, trying to sell them as authentic, you know, at the football games, they go and take you. If you got 20 boxes of goods out there, they take everything and then throw your butt in jail for being a deceiver. In other words, not only you're a deceiver, but you're a liar, you're, you're, you're a crook, <laughs> you're this honest, you know, all the above. So they throw your butt in jail, all right? So anyway, praise God. Now, when it comes down to the gospel, we do not want to be deceived. So let no man deceive you or let no one deceive you. That's the subject this morning, all right? Jesus said it, praise God, you know, take heed that you be not deceived. Paul said it, praise God. John said, try to, you know, don't believe every spirit, but try every spirit to see rather it be of God, you know. We today, praise God, the big deceivers on in the pulpit. I had a good talk with a, 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 a pastor on yesterday at, at uh, Popeyes, and you know, I, you know, to my my, my surprise, you know, it's just, it's sad that we got even Christians and. Uh, Pastors, yeah, pastors that don't know the difference between a motivation, a speaker, and a preacher. Like God, like he dumb, like he don't know the difference. He don't know what to call. You know, the school, colleges, the West Point, they call for motivation, a speaker. It, it has its place, company. But for a preacher, God called a preacher. And Paul said, how could they, you know, uh, 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 preach except they be sent? So we've been so deceived. And we're talking about even the very, praise God, people of God that claim to be the people of God. Remember the word of God. This reminds me that the Bible said that even the very elect shall be deceived. Man, wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I almost forgot about that one. But then, it's, then, the, then he said the comfort to I bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Listen, let's get into the word because I'm having too much fun, man. I couldn't great. You know, somebody got to preach. Somebody got to say something, okay? All right. Now, Paul say, now we beseech me. We urging them. We're begging you, all right? Brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our by our gathering together unto him. Now, I want you to understand, see, why Paul writing this letter like this, and this is the second lesson, letter to Thessalonians because the Thessalonians, you know, were genuine saints, real saints, love Paul, love the gospel, but man, they had to go through so so much trial, so much tribulation, so much of those that, you know, uh, 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 philosophers, you know, not Thessalonians, praise God, had lots of philosophers, all right, those 
that thought they, they knew, all right? They thought they knew everything, just the knowledge. They pride themselves in knowledge. They pride themselves in knowing whatever they thought they knew, okay? But you and I don't know, know nothing outside of Jesus, amen? The Bible said, let every man be a liar and God be true, amen? All right. So Paul trying to encourage them, praise God, not to be deceived because the deceivers, the philosophers, praise God, were really, you know, doing a work on the saints. So Paul had to write this letter to encourage them. He said, that you be not soon shaking the mind. See, you got all these doctrines, all these teaching, all this foolish. Think about it, saints. When you ever heard of a motivational speaker as a preacher, tell me about it. Think about it. I'm 60 years of age. Think back. I've never in my life seen such a thing. I've always heard and seen motivational speakers stay in their place. The preachers stay in their place, okay? The, the, the world don't call the preacher, and the church shouldn't call the motivational speaker. Hello. All right. So I'm just trying to help you out. Don't be so dumb. Don't be so deceived. Don't be shaking in mind with all these philosophies. Praise God. And philosophers said, you know, and that's what they're doing today. Just yeah, take the words and write them and make them all pretty and make you think it's God when it's not God. Make take They'll take sin and, and, and present it to you like a chocolate cake. Even defending themselves and some of the heinous crimes and stuff they're doing. Praise God. Well, see, God was just using me and and, and God uh, what allowed me to do this so that that I can have an experience what is it like, you know, to have two women and have uh, two children out of wedlock, you know, but he ain't do with me yet. Don't y'all hear that kind of talk? But he ain't done with me yet. Yeah, he is. <laughs> okay, you're still living and you can be saved when you repent, but you're bringing your nasty butt out the pulpit because this is not what we're to follow and people are buying it. Why? Because birds of a feather flock together. Deceivers goes about De de deceiving. Hello, somebody. All right. So don't you be checking them out. Don't you let this stuff get to you. <laughs> it say, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor uh, by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Now, he talked about this being at hand in his time. What I'm trying to tell you, you know, Peter say that a thousand years, you know, uh, to man is as one day unto the Lord. So when, they, when you hear them say, talk about, you know, that that he's ever closer today than ever before, you better believe it. You just have, gotta understand from God's perspective how God sees time versus you and I see time. Okay, so it's just been a few days to God, <laughs> why well, it's been thousands of years to us. Hello. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This is knowledge. Knowledge is power, okay? And if you got the real knowledge, it's hard for you to be deceived. This is why we're to be faithful. This is why we're to read the word for ourselves and get a full and right understanding, okay? All right. So in verse three, he said, let no man deceive you by any means. Now, I like that one. I love that. I love that. He said, let no man by any means enemy. I don't care what it is. And one of the biggest deceiving that we have, deceivers we have in the church today when it comes down to money. You know, think about it. I want y'all to think about it. All right. Now, let's think about a person that not educated, you know, or versus a person that's educated. But take a person that's not educated, don't make much money on the job, or need every dime they can get. And you go to church and here you got the biggest deceiver right in the church that tells you that God spoke to my spirit and say everybody that'll bring that $99 and 99 cents, everybody that bring thousand dollars he'll make you rich when you think about it how sick how could anybody call themselves a man or woman of god and get right in front of the people of god let alone god himself with no fear whatsoever and speak such lies that's why you got to know the word for yourself and rebuke the liars, okay? But don't let them deceive you by any means, okay? So if they're saying some of everything, <laughs> glory to God. So take heed that you be not deceived. Let no man deceive you. Look at, you know, even in our political world today, now you got a man like, you know, Mr. Trump, you know, let's pray for him. All right, here's a man that blame all his crime on Democrat, on everybody. They, they sound like a little child. They did it. They wasn't me. They did it. You know, here you got all these trials he's going to and Notice every one of them he's losing, all right? Bottom way, he's coming up with a new trial right now, you know, about the hush money. Slept with two 
prostitute. Not one, it was two. And he paid hush money to keep it down low when he was running against Hillary Clinton. Listen, Donald did a good job lying and deceiving the world. But boy, the, the sad part about it, you still got folks being deceived now, deceived right now. That's why even a preacher can get away with a bunch of foolish shit. Cause why? This is where the minds of the people are, that they give off excuses, you know, for the people that you for, okay? So it's everybody but him. Wow, I find that amazing. Those are what you call people that are being deceived, okay? But the words say, let no man deceive you by any means, not in the world, not in the church, especially not in the pulpit. Don't let nobody deceive you. He said, for that day shall come, and it's here. Praise God. It was there then and it's here today and it's stronger today than ever before. All right. The Bible say, Paul say, the time will come when man rather believe a lie than the truth. The Bible say the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. We want a church that we call church, but it got to be a worldly church, got to be a cesspool church, got to be a messy of a church, got to be the mess. The messier, the better. The messier, the more people you get. The messier. So the Praise God, the uh, a lake of fire is just opening itself up wide. It's getting bigger and bigger with these kind of folks right in the church. I want to put a word out there to all these so-called gospel singers and all that. You know, you know you're a gospel singer. Your gift is gospel singing. All right. But when you're tired and you want to keep the money flowing, then you start all this foolishness. God called me the pastor. I want to call you the liar. Okay. You're not. You're just not. All you're doing, okay, is deceiving people, praise God, and deceiving and fooling yourself. And you need to stop it. Okay. All right. So don't play with God. The pulpit is sacred. And praise God, your time is running out. Amen. Somebody just like a just like the dynamite back in the day, and they light that thing. And depending on how far you got to run to get out of the way, they make the string long. So I want to tell you, your string is running short and it's about to explode. So stop it. Okay. All right. You better respect God's house, or He can show you better than He can tell you. All right. Nothing worse than a liar, nothing worse than a deceiver. The Bible say all liars shall have their parts in the lake of fire. That's the word. Okay. That's going to make a lot of folks upset, okay? But it's tight, but it's right. So it says, except there come a fallen away first, that and that man of sin, which is the devil, be revealed the son of perdition, meaning the son of hell, okay? The devil of the devil himself. Listen here, I'm trying to help you and tell you nothing but the truth, okay? Because right now, the time is right here when Paul said, now we have those that believe in eternal salvation. You can never lose your salvation. But Paul says in uh, First uh, Timothy, the fourth chapter, Paul talks about and says, the Spirit speaketh expressly, praise God, that there will be a great fall away. Wow, but you say, praise God, once they've always said, you see the contradiction. Listen, let me go back to my subject. Uh, let no one deceive you. This is why as Christians, we have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I'm reminded that the apostle Paul said, he said, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, that your labor be not in vain. Did you not know the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but rather he that endured until the end? So I can be saved for 40 years and then decide to go and, uh, you know, have an affair, decide to, you know, to just start living a rioting lifestyle, praise God. Don't you know, praise God, you can give it up and wind up in hell at the last hour. You are almost there, but decide to go another way, okay? So we got to always, praise God, keep our eyes sharp, keep our minds sharp, and stay faithful unto the Lord. So that's why the word say, the, uh, 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 well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Behold, I make a ruler over many. Now, the word says, who opposes, this is that devil, who opposes and exalted himself. He exalted himself. It wasn't God, it was himself above all that is called God, all that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. He's always been jealous of God. He always wanted to be God. He wanted to be the man, okay? <laughs> it's so sad that it's so 
stupid to go against God and call a third of the heavenly host to go against God. He convinced them. Down in the book of Ephesians, you know, I like how Paul reminds the saints because one of the things that tripping up saints today, even very preachers, and tripping you up today is this very word that Paul writes to the Ephesians and Paul, praise God, says to them and trying to keep the unity of the body of Christ together, the Jews, the Gentile, praise God, circumcised, uncircumcised, trying to get a message, praise God, to get let them understand that, praise God, we're to keep the unity, praise God, of the body of Christ together, all right, doing everything within our power. But praise God, what tripped up the Ephesian saints was this right here. Paul says in verse 13, four, uh, Ephesians 4 and 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith. That's the goal. If you get everybody believing the same, everybody walking the same, everybody talking, dressing all the same. The saints is all to look the same. Amen. All right. It's not about, well, my church don't mind if you have your butt out. My church don't mind if you walk in the church with spandex on. Listen, it ain't your church. It's the body of Christ, and we're all supposed to think alike, look alike, walk alike. Praise God. We're supposed to be just like the armed servants. Everybody in the military, if they all marching just like in China and Russia, everybody look alike, everybody marching alike, everybody looking alike. <laughs> If your mama come out to see you, she's going to be confused. Oh, well, 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 which one of my son? <laughs> or daughter. Because <laughs> why? They all look alike. Now watch this right here. So Paul says this right here. Paul said now in 13, in the knowledge of, our, of, our son, of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, he said, unto the measuring of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Now 14, that we hence be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, every wind of doctrine, little bit of here, little, you know how dangerous it is with some of you Christians, praise God, and run into every church door that's open, run into the Catholic, run into the Baptist, run into the Pentecostal, run into Yahweh, run into, praise God, you know, uh, uh, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, black Hebrews, everything, what happened, you get all messed up, like, and your brain is spinning like a spinning top, and you don't know which way to go, you get so confused, and you're so cluttered, uh, and you just say, you know what? Just forget about religion. That's what the devil wanted. <laughs> Led you right there so you feel like you're about to explode because you're so deceived, you're so confused. But remember, God is not the author of confusion. So bottom line, praise God, he tells us, and what messed up the Ephesian saints is that they were carried about with every wind of doctrine. Stick with one, find it, and if you're convinced, stick with it. He said, by the slate of men and cunning craft, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. All right. So I won't be surprised they got a new one tomorrow. Oh, look at here. We got a new one. Oh, the Lord. Oh, my eyes and showed me this, showed me that. Just because they say the Lord, you better take your Bible and say, fool, get out of here. This ain't God. This is you. <laughs> Again, let no one deceive you. Now, listen, I enjoyed the word this morning. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I told you I was going to enjoy it, okay? I told you you was going to like it as well, okay? So, listen, I want to remind you about our devotion. I hope you enjoyed the word again this morning. Let no one deceive you. Uh, so, the uh, Saturday devotion is be on your guard, saints. Listen, be on your guard. But y'all know DOCCL putting it out there. You know we're giving you some word, and I don't care what that devil said. Get mad all your wall, praise God. I'm going to stick with the word and my job as preacher called of God sent by God is to preach praise God the unadulterated word of God all right so listen here the main goal is to please him that has sent me okay because <laughs> if you get mad at me the Bible says don't fear him who can take your life but fear him who can take both the life and the soul so listen here you can't put me in hell you might take my life but you can't put me in hell but God can <laughs> so you better fear him all right so I'm just gonna preach it like I should okay so tomorrow is uh be on your guard second Peter 3 14 through 18 all right so that is be on your guard um second Peter 3 14 through 18 so if the preacher just preaches the word is there to help us praise God and keep us focused and you'll make it in amen <laughs> glory to God so let's our unity statement because I gotta go I told you I was gonna enjoy the word today I just knew it I knew it I knew it I'm like oh my god this one is really really needed all right let no one deceive you that is really really needed today so remember saints now y'all gotta put the word out there and stand bold and stand strong and rebuke the devil rebuke to keep 
evangelicals with this foolish with Trump. Rebuke them. The, if you're a preacher, rebuke him. If you're a bishop, rebuke him. Stand in rebuke. You and I have that authority and power to do so. And if you don't believe me, try it and watch the devil get mad. <laughs> you're cutting without a knife. <laughs> you're shouting without a gun. Hello, it's tight. But it's right. Amen. Stand for something or fall for anything. All right. So unity statement. God bless you. I enjoyed you all week long. This has been a great week in the word. Praise God. And I hope you enjoyed it. Praise God. And encourage, encourage someone to come to church Sunday. This is Palm Sunday coming. So say, let's get ready. Let's get ready and do a great job for the Lord. All right. So unity statement. Unity in everything we do. All right. Now, David said how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. When you're not in church and just online, that ain't unity. You're not in church. Hello, somebody. <laughs> get back, Jack. That, that old song in the movie say, get back, Jack. Get back, Jack. Okay. All right. So unity in our love, unity in our faith, unity in our faithfulness, unity in prayer, unity in worship, unity in our Bible study, unity in our giving, unity in evangelism, and unity in all project and everything we do, let's work together. All right. So remember, we will not be having our barbecue fundraising. All right. It's going to, it's closed out for this Saturday. I think that this is fourth Saturday coming up. Right. So anyway, praise God. God bless you real good. So pray for me. Pray for the Beltram family. Praise God. That saints, let's be the saints that God will have us to be. So this is why we're to do like, like the word said in Hebrew, but rather exalting one another. Can't do that when you're not in church, seeing that the day it's approaching. Okay. What day? Jesus coming back and better not come with your un not ready and with your work undone, okay? So you better be ready. It's tight, but it's right. Hope I encourage you this morning. So listen, God bless you real good. Have a great day, everybody. I feel like I done preached the sermon. Boy, y'all are really getting blessed. And listen, and we do it with no charge, all right? What's the prize? It's a uh, uh, Shirley Caesar say the, the, uh, the little boy that you gave him a letter mm. Reminding him all that she had done, the mama had done for the little boy. And praise God, he said, no charge. <laughs> this is no charge. All right, God got it. He'll take care. All right. <laughs> So no charge to you. God got it. All right. So we thank God for it. So we pray to God, give me the strength to do it again next week. If it be his will. All right. So God bless you real good. Y'all have a great and wonderful day.